This is the 10th video report that I'm making from General Convention. There will be one more tomorrow night after we have concluded. This in many ways has been a very, very historic day in actually the history of the Episcopal Church. The first thing has to do with what's happened with money. Um, over two and a half, almost three million dollars was in this budget specifically for evangelistic efforts from digital media evangelism to church planting to supporting individual evangelistic efforts in various committees. Um, the corner has turned in many ways. Uh, some of you might remember eons ago the decade of evangelism which completely fell flat. Quite honestly given these efforts as well as the election of a presiding bishop who has a very strong commitment to evangelism, this really could be a new day of flourishing in evangelism in the Episcopal Church. Now a lot of this is driven by a handful of conservatives leading the way who really do have a passion for sharing the gospel. But the fact of the matter is, is that the enthusiasm about these resolutions are across the church and that really was reflected in the huge support in both houses, House of Deputies and House of Bishops for a budget that had such enormous money attached to evangelistic efforts. I guess everybody knows that in so many ways some parts of the Episcopal Church really are crumbling and declining and something has to be done. And so the good news is that that, in essence, um, sad opportunity becomes a good opportunity to be able to really reach out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Another way that marked today as historic was a group of communion partner bishops. Those are biblically conservative bishops who work hand in hand both together and in concert with wide parts of the Ang Anglican communion produced a public statement saying that they disassociated themselves from the resolutions that by canon as well as by liturgy redefined marriage in the life of the Episcopal Church. Now that in and of itself would not have been entirely historic because that happened three years ago. Different this time was the response that it received. People in the House who, House of Bishops I mean, who really would not support that position at all really stood in our defense and created their own mind of the house resolution declaring their support for the communion partner bishops the valuable voice they are in the house and choosing to say that they are just as much a part of the Episcopal Church as anyone else. Now some cynic might say well of course they're on the winning side they have every reason to in essence be charitable but the fact of the matter is, is that precedents are being laid in these resolutions for a blessed place for a conservative position that has not existed previously. And that really will give us a good platform as we move forward in the years ahead to deal with the other resolutions and the other efforts at things like prayer book revision that certainly are coming down the pike. So what was historic, in other words, was not just the fact that the communion partners issued this public statement. The fact is the real historic nature of it was the fact that it was so well received and the mind of the House created their own resolution. You should know already that there are other parts of the Anglican communion that are reacting negatively to what the Episcopal Church has done. Us producing this statement, because I'm a signatory on the communion partner House of Bishops statement, will go a long way to strengthening and maintaining these international ties. Um, there are places where the Episcopal Church is not welcome in other parts of the communion. That has never been true, however, for the communion partner bishops. We are always warmly received, and in fact our presence is requested in other meetings in other parts of the world in the Anglican communion in ways that are not always true for the Episcopal Church. So this was wonderful in a lot of ways. And if you're interested in reading the Communion Partner Bishop Statement, it's available online on the diocesan website. It's on the Facebook page, Twitter feed, uh, both for me as well as for the Diocese of Central Florida. 
The last thing I want to mention, besides the historic budget, besides the efforts that have been made in evangelism and the resolutions around the gay marriage question, has everything to do with an almost taboo subject in the Episcopal Church, and that's alcohol. Uh, several resolutions have come forward to call the Episcopal Church, quite frankly, to account for their complicity in um, really ignoring the problem of alcohol and really calling on churches to make new room in lots of very practical ways so that nobody who comes to the Episcopal Church will feel any pressure to consume alcoholic beverages whatsoever. Uh, the fact that that was faced so squarely, and in fact in the House of Bishops, one of the bishops who introduced those resolutions said, hi, and get, said his name in, and he said, like they do in AA, I'm an alcoholic, and began, shared his own personal story about his own recovery, and a very strong, heartfelt plea on why these resolutions were so important. So in many ways, this has been important in the life of the Episcopal Church. Two other things, one of which is sort of solemn and the other funny, solemn in a good way. A seminarian came up to me, a senior in seminary at one of our schools, who attends, who is in the House of Deputies. And he came up, introduced himself to me, I've never met him before, and he said, I want you to know that the deputation from Central Florida has handled themselves with such courage and such grace and the resolutions they've introduced and the things that they've done, here, seeing them and hearing them causes me to know in a new way that God's truth really will triumph. And that was an astonishing thing to hear from that seminarian. The other thing, uh, far less profound, was on my Twitter feed, uh, the p statement that I made and published about uh, gay marriage in the Supreme Court has been making its way around. And one re responder said to his followers, well, if you want to read the story on gay marriage from a conservative who's not a jerk, then read Greg Brewer's. So I'm glad at least in a small way, in ways we're making a difference. So again, thank you so much for your prayers. Pay attention to what's going on. And tomorrow evening will be my last report. And then I will look forward to seeing many of you at our meeting at St. Luke and St. Peter's and St. Cloud, where our deputation and I will be there to report to the diocese about what it was like and what these implications are for us here in the Diocese of Central Florida. Thank you very much.